Hey everybody, I'm Robert Donovan. Welcome to this episode of Not Treconomics. This will be part one of three in a series in which I demonstrate how to create the sequence that you're seeing here. I will not be modeling the ship in this tutorial. I have a series on how I built this ship. If you want to use it, you can use it to build this ship. If you don't happen to like this ship, you could get another one from blendswap.com or as I often as I would readily encourage you to do, you could try building your own and see what you come up with and then use it. If you just want to do the animation effects, you can use an empty in place of the ship and do everything you're seeing here with the exception that there wouldn't be a ship there. You'd just be zipping through an empty warp bubble. So those are your options there. If you want to do the rest of this, let's get to it. First thing we want to do is set up our render and scene settings. I'm going to pull this out a little farther so we get a little better view of things. And in my render settings here, I want to set up border rendering. I want the frame rate to be 30 frames per second. That's just what I like. You can pick whatever you want. On the t output, I want that to be something other than temp. I have a holds folder that I use for that. I usually output to PNG files because I prefer to render to stills. Under sampling, I'm just going to use 128 samples for this. That gets you a decent lack of noise and it will render fairly quickly even on my slow system. For light paths, I'm going to set the max bounces to 8. I'm going to leave everything else the same there. For motion blur, we want to turn that on and I want a slightly quicker shutter. We're going to do 0.35 instead of 0.50 and that will be it for the render tab. Under the scene tab here we want to go to passes. We are going to be adding separate uh, effects to multiple materials. So I want material index turned on. In the world view I'm going to use my standard star field. So I'm going to click use nodes, click this button here, click environment texture, and open up my NASA panoramic image star field, which I will have a link in the description below for. Going to set the strength on this to about 1.2. Doesn't need to be super bright for what we're doing here. And lastly, let's make sure settings. Okay, I sometimes change things there, but I'm going to leave that the way it is. So that takes care of the world view. Last thing under the camera settings, I'm going to set the start clipping to 0 0.05 and the end clipping to 500. I'm just going to stick with Blender units for this one. That takes care of all of that bit of housekeeping. The last uh, thing before we get started I want to do is resize the camera. It's a little bit big for what I want to do here. So with the camera selected, hit S to scale and scale it down to 10% of its current size. Point one, enter, and then uh, that will take care of that. So that takes get that gets us the first that takes care of all the sort of little housekeeping bits before we get started. Now if you do want to get a ship from BlendSwap or someplace else and append that to this file, what you'll have to do is click File and click Append. And I'm going to go into my Blend Files folder here and pick up, navigate to the Blend file which has the object I want. I'm going to click on Object. I'm going to pick the ship there. I name it the Altors. And that brings the ship in. Now, because I know that this is an animation file from which I'm pulling this ship, one of the first things I want to do is go into the dope sheet and you'll see that I have pulled in all the animation metadata with the ship when I appended it. I don't want this stuff, so we're going to hit A a couple of times to make sure everything is selected. Hit the X key and click Delete Keyframes. Go back to the 3D view. Now the ship has been appended cleanly. I'm going to select the ship and I like to select things in the outliner. If you select things in the viewport, you use the right mouse button. If you're selecting things on the outliner, you can use the left mouse button. Plus, as you get a more complex scene, it can be a little easier to select individual objects in the outliner than in the scene itself, particularly if they're bunched close together in a big scene. So with the ship selected, I'm going to hit Shift S and I'm going to take that selection to cursor. Now I want to add a cylinder, which is going to be space-time, which we're going to warp around the ship, which is what 
a warp drive does. So shift A and under mesh, click cylinder. We want it to have 64 vertices. We want the fill cap type to be nothing. We want to generate UVs. We want smooth shading and we want to rotate it in the x-axis at 90 degrees. So hit the R key, hit the X key, and then type 90 on the number keys across the top of your keyboard. Now we've aligned this thing with the long axis of the ship. We need to edit it just a bit. So hit numpad 7, hit numpad 5 to go into orthographic view, and then hit the tab key to go into edit mode. I want to move this thing up one blender unit, so I'm going to hit G to grab. I'm going to hit Y to constrain to the Y axis, and then the number 1, and then enter. That'll move this thing up so that the origin's on the base of the cylinder here, which comes in handy for certain things. Next thing we want to do is do a little, uh, add a little geometry and do a little scaling and editing of this thing. So we will go ahead and hit the A key to deselect everything in the cylinder. I'm going to hit the Z key to go into wireframe mode, and I'm going to hit the B key to go into box select mode. I'm going to box select that top ring of vertices. Now I want to add a face just to the end of that cylinder, so I'm going to hit the F key. And you can't see it, but it's there. We just added a face. Now I'm going to scale this thing along the Y axis, so I'm going to hold the Shift key down, middle mouse, and move this here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, Need a little more maneuvering room here. I want this thing to be about 30 blender units long. So there we go. And now we will, with those uh, vertices still selected, we will hit the G key, the Y key, and then type in 2, 8, enter. That gets us our scaling. And then we will go ahead and hit A. We need to add a little bit. We need to add some loop cuts along the length of this cylinder. So let's go to numpad 3 to go to side view. And we're going to go ahead and do control R. And I want to add 512 loop cuts to this thing. Hit enter. Hit enter again. Now hit A and hit A again. That selects all of the vertices. And with all of the vertices selected, go to shading and UVs and flip the normals. Now that we flip the normals, we can go back into object mode. So hit the tab key, hit the Z key to go into solid view. You'll see the shadows look a little bit weird because the normals have been flipped. So we're going to need to see inside the sphere because we want to apply the texture to the inside of it. So let's hit the N key, go down here, and click on backface culling. Now we can see inside the cylinder. And now we want to scale the cylinder without scaling the y-axis though. So we want to do uh, hit S to scale, hold the shift key down, press the Y key, that locks the scaling in the y-axis, and then we want to go 0 0.05. I know, it looks like the ship is now trying to fly through a drinking straw. It's okay, we've got a plan. So let's go ahead and zoom in here, because our next step is we're going to add some materials to this cylinder. So let's go ahead and grab the chevrons here, left click. When they turn into a cross, when the, when the cursor goes from this to a crosshair like that, left click and then just drag straight down to split this window horizontally. Come over here and go to the node editor on the top window and then the bottom window, click down here and select material view. Up here we're going to click new. Zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. And we're going to left click on this diffuse node. We're going to hit X to get rid of it. Shift A, and we want to add an emission shader. We'll hit N to get rid of this here. Okay, next we want to add a texture coordinate node. And I'm just doing Shift A to bring these menus up here. So we want a texture coordinate node. We want two image shaders, or image textures rather, two image texture nodes. There's one, Shift D, duplicate that. We want to take the UV output to the vector input on both of these. I now want to get a mix RGB node, that's under color. Take the top color output to the top color input, bottom color output to the bottom color input. I'm going to take this to the emission shader. That doesn't look very interesting because we need to add some images to our image texture nodes. The first one is going to be the star field I use for the world view. So we will go ahead and add that right there. And the second one is going to be the Trumpler 14 star cluster. And again, I will have links in the description for the 
how you can get all these. So I'm going to click this one, I'm going to click this one, and there we go. That gets our star field mapped to the inside of the sphere. The next thing we want to do is stretch that out just a little bit. So let's go into the UV image editor with your cursor in the top window, hit the tab key, then hit the A key, and then hit S to scale, hit Y, and then point 0.5. Now hit tab to get out of edit mode, and you'll see we have stretched that out a little bit. Go back to the node editor. We want to blue shift this a little bit, so let's go ahead and we'll move this a little farther over here. Go to Converter, Color Ramp, put that in there. Zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little easier. I'm going to click this plus sign here. I'm going to add a third slider. And we want to click down here to the color palette. We want to add a fairly well saturated shade of blue here, maybe a little darker than that. And let's take the brightness all the way to the top here. Yeah, we might want to get that a little bit over farther still. There we go. We want to then take the zero slider, which is the black slider. We want to set that at 0 0.04. We want to click this here to go to 1, which is the, the 1 slider, the blue slider. We want to make that 0.2. And on this last one, which is the two slider, the white slider, we want to make that point three. So now we have a nice, you can see some stars, you can see some blown out highlights as you fly through the thing. And we also want to take the strength of this emission up to about 3.5, which gives it a nice kind of energetic look as you're flying through there. Also gives you enough emission so that you can get some decent fog glow on there later in compositing, which we will do. Okay, so we've now got our first material added to this cylinder. And while we're doing this, let's go over here to the object data for the cylinder. Let's name this space time. And let's go to the materials node here and name this material that we just added space time. Okay, that takes care of that. Now we want to add a material to the very end of this cylinder where we put that face on earlier. So let's put the crosshair over the chevrons here. Left click, drag the crosshair into this window and release. That makes this window full size again. And then we are going to rotate. I believe they refer to this as panning and zooming. There we go. Let's rotate this around like so. Bring it up here. Zoom back in. And you see the problem we have here. We have applied this material and it looks really weird on the end of that face. Let's go to tab to edit mode. Go to face select mode. All right, there we go. We've just selected that. By clicking that dot, we select just that face. So now we want to click the plus over here. We want to click new. We're going to make this uh, material, we're going to call it white hole. Like that. And we're going to go down here and get rid of this diffuse. We're going to change it to an emission. Going to set the strength to about 20, make it really nice and bright, and that will take care of that. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to hit this button here, click Assign. So if we deselect this and select it again, we're only selecting that face. Hit the Tab key to go back to Object Mode. And if you zoom around, you can see we have a white face on the inside of that cylinder. Let's go to NumPad 3. And we will zoom in about that far so we can see the ship. And the final thing we have to do is add the cast modifier to this cylinder. The way we do that is click on the modifiers tab over here, make sure space time is selected. Click Add Modifier, click Cast, and now we have to apply the rotation and scaling we've just done to this thing. So Control A, and then Rotation and Scale, and now you see the effect I'm going for. This is a really, really, really big warp bubble. We don't need it that big. We're going to adjust the size using the radius control here. We're going to go 2.5 for that. And then we're going to set the factor to 0.85. 
The other thing you want to do is assign a control object to the cast modifier and make that the ship. So now if I select the ship and grab it in the y-axis and move it along the cylinder, you see now we have a bubble of space-time around the ship as the, that moves as the ship moves, like that. So we'll hit Control z to take that back to where we started. And that is how we are going to do the warp bubble effect. The next thing we want to do is set up the starting, what I call setting up the start frame. We want to put everything in their starting position to start the animation from. And once we finish that, that will be the end of part one. In part two, we're going to do the keyframing. In part three, we'll do the compositing. So we'll finish this up here with a numpad seven. We'll go into top view here. We'll zoom in. And what we want to do is add an empty. So shift A. Plain axes is fine. You can use any of them, doesn't matter. Then grab this in the Y axis and move it just in front of the ship, like that. Rename it cam target or camera target. And while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and just display that name right there. I'm going to click display. Not that you need to, I'm just figure it might help as far as the tutorial. When I zoom in, you'll know what it is. With that done, we next need to go to and select the camera. Click the constraints tab here. Add a constraint, and we want to add a track two constraint to the camera. We want to make the target, the cam target empty. Click select minus Z and Y for the settings for this. If you go to numpad 3 now, and we grab the camera, you'll see that it's always pointing at the center of that empty. No matter which way we move in, it would work just as well doing this side to side or in circles. We'll leave the camera up there at the moment, for the moment, up top there like that. Select the cam target object. Go shift S and selection to cursor. Then select the camera. Move it over here like so till it's right near the leading edge of the warp bubble. And I'm going to zoom it, or not zoom it, I'm going to grab it in the z-axis and move it down till it's about, not super duper low, but like that. I'm going to move it a little bit farther back. And then I'm going to go to numpad 7 to go to top view. And we want to move this far enough over. Let's move this down. I'm going to hold the le I'm going to left... I'm going to left mouse click and then hold the shift key down so I can move this with finer control. Do the same thing with the x-axis here. Now I go to numpad 0 to get a good view here. I can probably live with that. Let's do uh, G, Z, hold the shift key down and move this up just a bit here. And then left click to confirm. Okay, that gets my camera in the starting position. Let's go back to numpad 7. So now what I want to do is I want to set up kind of a basic animation rig here. I'm going to parent the empty to the ship first. So I'm going to select the cam target, hold the shift key down, select the ship, press Control plus P, and I'm going to select Object Keep Transform. So that parents the empty to the ship. So if I move the ship now, the camera will always be looking at the ship and the advantage of this is I can move the camera target empty independently of the ship. It's parented to the ship, but the child of the the child object can move independently of the parent object. So if I want to add camera shake, or if I want the camera to look somewhere else as the ship is going forward, I can do that now. So the next thing we want to do though is I want to get this where the ship is enveloped by the warp bubble, and I want to do it right where the... I, I want the back end crimped like the front end is here, because that way you can't see any of the normal space stars behind the ship as you're going through the warp bubble, which kind of messes up the effect. One last thing before I do that, I'm going to check the camera here. Make sure that it is not is far enough away that it doesn't ever hit the ship, because we're going to be doing some stuff with this, and we want it to be far enough away where they're not going to ever intersect. So with that done, with the camera moved where it is, I'm going to select the camera, and I'm going to temporarily parent that to the ship too. So shift, select the ship, control P again, 
and then object keep transform. Now if I select the ship alone, I'm going to move the ship like this, and you see how this, see how this thing stretches way behind the ship there, and moves forward as the ship does, starting to crimp right there. I'm going to go till it stops moving, which is where the origin is. All right, so we're going to make that about, let's zoom on, let's uh, scroll up here. We want this to be about 2.5. Just to be absolutely certain that we have this thing the way we where we need it, where we're not going to mess with weird looking star effects on the back from in in the background. So we'll, we'll pull this down here, and now that we have this set up where we want it, we are going to click the plus sign here, select the camera again, shift select the ship again, and this whoops wrong one. Let's hit the tab key. We'll try that again. Select the, ca select the camera. Shift select that one, the, not the ship itself, but the, the parented top of that, the, the outside one. We'll then hit Alt P, clear, clear and keep transformation. Now the camera is no longer parented to the ship, and I don't want it parented to the ship for the animation. So that takes care of all the stuff we need to do to get ready to do the animation itself. We've created the cylinder, we've created the warp bubble, we've imported or appended the ship, we've set up the camera. So that'll be the end of part one. Thanks a lot for watching. In the next episode, we're going to do all the keyframing for the animation of the ship, the cylinder, the camera, and the strengths of some of the emission shaders. And that will be part two. In part three, we will do the compositing. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this interesting or at least and maybe even useful. I'm Robert Donovan, and may the balance of your day be awesome.